Hello and welcome to a long waiting edition of uh, MH2's Foundation 101, where today I'm not alone. Uh, I'm with my uh, good buddy, Carl Bolduc. Carl, uh, good afternoon. How are you? I'm very good. Thanks for uh, hosting me. Thanks for organizing this presentation. And for you to join. So uh, for context, today we are going to talk about cross-border dynamics between the Middle East and to an extent the US, whether they are structure, structure there, underlying assets, or a combination of both. And this comes really from two topics. The first topic is uh, the fact that the world of structuring has changed immensely over the past couple of years. We talked about it uh, ad nauseum uh, on this uh, webcast and uh, at conferences is the rise of the so-called super jurisdictions uh, as we know them. So this is uh, uh, typically jurisdiction which are top 10 as global financial centers, top 10 as structuring centers, and top 10 as foreign direct investment jurisdiction. And as we can see, uh, on these slides, the UAE has done pretty well for itself over the past 15 years, thanks to uh, regulations, most importantly. But it is not alone. It is a club of five. And as part of these five, yes, the UAE is there, but the US is there as well. And this is what I want to explore with you, because uh, you are a trustee. You uh, play a lot with uh, private trust companies, with US trusts. So this is where the discussion comes in. Let's go back to the UAE for a second. Uh, the tool of choice for intergenerational legacy planning in the UAE is the foundation, although we tend to see uh, trusts uh, increasingly more in practice, but foundation is really the go-to. As you can see from these numbers, we are on track this year, 2023, for more than 250 foundation to be registered in one of the three registrars. If you wanna learn more specifically about this, please let us know. And the typical structure, here I'm using the example of the AFC as a foundation, underlying companies, one, maybe two under it, maybe one for the business, maybe one for real estate or financial assets. Uh, that is typically what we see and what we have been implemented for local and regional families. Now, it is very rare that these families have only UAE or Middle Eastern assets. Often they would have something abroad, think a bank account in Switzerland, private equity in Luxembourg, or often, uh, something in on state side. Uh, and increasingly, families are saying, hey, I want to consolidate that myself. I want control over these assets too. So this is something that they can implement, a consolidation through the top, through a domestic fiduciary structure, which would actually expand cross-border and absorb uh, US C2 assets. It is possible. Uh, tax advice recommended, but generally uh, reasonably uh, smooth and uh, streamline. Uh, you can do a little bit more complicated. You can also have this entity that becomes the trustee of one or several trusts that would be set up in my example here. It would be a DIFC trust. And again, this is something that we have been implementing for families over the past three, four years uh, past. Now, and that's the topic du jour, is uh, not every family wants to have all its eggs in one basket and uh, may want to segregate the control and the holding of regional assets versus, uh, in this case, U.S. assets. And uh, what you and I, mostly you, uh, to be frank, uh, have co-written together and published a few weeks back was the use of the so-called Wyoming Private Trust uh, Company to consolidate in an efficient manner uh, these uh, US C2 uh, assets. And we had so much responses that we thought that we would actually do a webcast out of it. So here you are. Uh, so let's jump right into this. And uh, my first question to you will be, uh, we we have talked about these super jurisdiction, uh, uh, Wyoming, uh, some people may not have heard of. So why? In your practice, you think that Wyoming has emer been emerging as one of the preeminent uh, trust situs state in the US? So in the US, there's not so many places where you can set up a PTC. So Wyoming is probably the most popular place. Um, why? Because really, uh, reason number one is because of the asset protection laws that uh, mm -hmm. Wyoming has. 
than contrary to other states, as well as there's specific legislations for PTCs. You can set them up elsewhere without any specific legislation, but there, that's the case in uh, yep. in Wyoming. And obviously, uh, another important factor is that there's no state income tax in Wyoming. And okay. one that I'm not adding here in the presentation, obviously, but if you ever have board meeting and you want to combine your skiing vacation, well, you have Jackson Hole, one of the best ski resorts in the world. So there you go. Clearly, someone is talking from experience. So uh, very interesting that there is a recognition of the PTC, whether by law or by jurisprudence. Uh, we actually recommend clients to consider jurisdiction that have these uh, tick the box, because otherwise uh, you don't do not necessarily know how you will be treated here. We do know how we, we will be treated. So let's dive a little bit more into uh, the concept and more uh, about the benefits of uh, uh, a PTC. Can you uh, touch on this subject, please? So really, why you want to set up a PTC is is about it's about control. You mm -hmm. want to make sure that you control uh, uh, what is happening in the trust. Uh, so you have some sort of benefits of having a corporate trustee, so not an individual, so yeah, as an entity acting as trustee. But the family can keep control, and today that's really what most families are looking for. And I suppose that Wyoming uh, private trust company regime of, uh, allows uh, multiple or pretty much any corporate tool to act as a trustee. Yeah, you can correct? do corporation or LLC. You can you can set it up uh, as uh, as you want. So you touched on the flexibility uh, of permitting family members to uh, to have control over uh, operations, let's say uh, investment as well, and 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 governments. Uh, what about what about oversight? Uh, do you need to be regulated uh, if you have a PTC in Wyoming? So in most cases, families will not choose to be regulated. You do have the choice, and but it, it's obviously uh, much more expensive, much more cumbersome. But for very very large families, uh, with all the substantial assets, they will want to be supervised by the by the banking division of Wyoming. But in most cases, the family is saying, no, we want control. We're going to be the one supervising what's happening in the PTC. So there's, it's a family supervision. So it's a voluntary choice. So I like that. I think this is this give, providing the flexibility to the family to say, we want to be regulated or supervised or not. This is great. This is what you would have, let's say, in the UAE, if you have a proprietary investment company, some family offices say, we want to be regulated. Uh, because we're going to be perceived better by counterparty. Some will say we do not want, but we still want to implement best practice. For example, seeking the support of a professional administrator to help. We'll touch on this in a few minutes. Uh, thinking big picture, uh, plenty of offshore jurisdictions today, offshore or midshores, permit the establishment of PTC or PTFs. Uh, either by law or by practice. So uh, let's go back to to, to Wyoming. Uh, why should I consider, let's say, Wyoming uh, in the U.S. as opposed to BVI, Cayman, and or any other jurisdiction if I want to go outside of the UAE? So a lot of uh, families today want to avoid, um, let's say, the offshore connotation of certain jurisdictions. They want mm -hmm. something. Uh, so-called onshore, and uh, the U.S. offers that possibility. Wyoming, in specific, uh, offers that. And the why Wyoming in the U.S. specific is because Wyoming is is extremely easy to uh, to set up. It takes takes a few days to set up a PTC. Um, as I said, there's very minimal. Uh, regulatory requirements to set it up. Another very important part uh, aspect, which is not the case in other jurisdictions, is there's no capital requirement when you set up your entity. Um, obviously, I came back to that. There's no uh, state income tax. Yeah. The filing fees are super low. And uh, one aspect that uh, we have to talk about today one of the reasons why the U.S. is also popular is because, well, there's no FATCA or CRS reporting requirements um, for 
the reasons that uh, we all know the US is not a signatory uh, to CRS. Yeah. And for families uh, who want control, flexibility, confidentiality, uh, this is the place to be today. Yeah, I agree. I, I think I, I, we, we at MHQ like the privacy aspect, uh, the fact that you control your own data, that you do not change, uh, transfer it to, to cross-border too much, that you do not transfer it to third party too much. They, this is clearly uh, a big selling point of this structure, uh, we find. We discussed uh, uh, management where you mentioned uh, several times the ability for the family to control. So let's dive into this. How does it really work uh, uh, in practice, the ongoing management of these structures? So you can structure them as you want, but how you normally would see it is that you divide the administration in three uh, parts. Mm -hmm. So what the family, when they say that they want control, what does that really mean is they want to control the investments. They want to yeah. say, for example, we want to be able to invest 100% of the trust assets in private equity. Well, in a normal trust arrangements, you can't do that. You have to be diversified. You have to have a conservative approach um, as you have a fiduciary duty to do so. And that's really so that the really the, the, the two most important reasons why you set up a PTC is because you want control and you want to invest in what you want. We have families today who say, no, I want to be 100% private equity. I don't believe in the stock market. Um, I want to do my own things. And a normal trust, trust agreement, trust arrangement, you cannot do that. And by having this investment committee, the family can decide what to invest in. And if they don't want to be diversified, if they want to be concentrated, they can do that. And that's that's like I cannot emphasize this enough how important this is. Yeah, it's, so that's the, the first. it's also why foundation have been uh, popular on, on the second hand is, is is the ability to look at you mentioned the concentration in a highly volatile asset class, which is private equity. Uh, that's clearly not possible under a traditional trust model, but it, it in, in this model, no problem at all. The, the families knows its risk. It, it also understands the underlying investments. Uh, the, so the non-traditional part is something that is uh, key in uh, this going for this structure as opposed to a, let's say, a mainstream institutional trustee. I agree with you. The investment committee is one of them. Uh, what about uh, distribution and administration? Can uh, uh, family members be involved in these or would that be a conflict? No, no, for sure the family members are involved. The For the distribution committee, normally the beneficiaries would not be involved. You want somebody who's, uh, who's not a beneficiary, who's disinterested, mm -hmm. uh, because that's that's clearly, uh, as the name says it, uh, the committee that decides what to distribute and to who. Um, so you want somebody who's not a beneficiary. Then we have the, the third committee, that we sometimes set up, as I said, um, is the administration committee, and that's really the role of the service provider. So that is that's MHQ, that's CW, uh, that can be also the family office working with us. And what does that mean? What does that? What does the administrative committee do? Well, it's the paperwork. Yeah, it's what the family normally doesn't want to be involved in. They want to be involved in the investment investments. They want to be involved and the distribution, and they leave the paperwork basically to us, the service provider. So really key decision making can stay in the, by and large in the hands of the family, if not at all. And then you have a, some sort of a administration, operating, outsourcing for everything that is non-strategic. And then you have a guarantee that both things are handled well, one by the family, which knows the investments well, one by the administrators, so that they have the compliance calendar, the admin calendar, nothing is missed, no filing is missed, everything is accurate, right? All right. Very good. Um, you, you mentioned, I just want to come, come back to this quickly because I, I've seen it in the slide, uh, the, the duration of a Wyoming trust just out, just out of interest. So every jurisdiction is different. Some some jurisdictions have 50 years, some jurisdictions have 99 years, some jurisdictions have hundreds. Uh, what about uh, uh, Wyoming? Any specificity in terms of length? So indeed, families today, they want a dynasty, dynasty trust. 
And because they're saying, okay, if we go for the typical trust jurisdiction, life and being plus 80 years, whatever, um, that, that doesn't last very long. You can't say I want this for three generations, four yep. generations. So of course, then Wyoming says, okay, we're gonna do 1000 years, um, which is, is a little bit funny when you think about it. But if you think, well, three, four generations, already most jurisdictions will not, uh, would not work. So obviously they have put a, a, an extremely large number, but four generations, you're, you're, you're past the 150 years of uh, most other jurisdictions. So very big advantage of using Wyoming for that. Yeah, by all means. So to sum up, Wyoming PTC, main advantages that you see in practice. So as I, as I said, really, when the family wants to control uh, how things are done, what to distribute to who, how to do the investments, what to invest in. Then we separate the tasks. It's not only the trustee that does everything, which I just listed. No, you have family members who can do some of the uh, activities. You have sometimes the family office um, and the service providers. And then obviously if the family members want to be involved, then by having a corporate entity, having a PTC, well, you limit the liability of the family members. Also by having uh, a specialist for every type of tasks, well, you can uh, enhance efficiencies. And for the family being involved, and when I say family, it's a very large world, uh, word. Uh, you start with uh, perhaps grandma and you can go down uh, three generations. Uh, which can mean a very, very large family. And for some, well, that has some education uh, values to be involved in the family business and what the family is invested in. Uh, so it's, it's, it's very beneficial for younger generations uh, to be involved at this point in the structure. So here you have it. This is uh, how we believe uh, CW partners, us at MHQ, that uh, a modern multi-jurisdiction family holding family investment structure can work. You have uh, a UAE-based families with multi-jurisdictional assets. You could perfectly well consolidate everything under it. But if you are looking at some foreign assets that you want to segregate, keep control, particularly if these assets are US situs assets, you could go much worse then uh, going for a Wyoming PTC, you have it, uh, you have it uh, done here. Uh, here we chose a Wyoming trust. It could be a DIFC trust, but just, as uh, Cal mentioned, uh, Wyoming would have uh, some specific features that the UE does not necessarily have. And then you have, would have an entire vertical that is uh, US side and another vertical that is, let's say, emerging market side uh, with uh, what you have in the UE. All the while, with the same family keeping the control, keeping it in the family, and ensuring business continuity and asset protection. I think we ticked all the boxes, Cal. Uh, thank you very much for joining me on this webcast, which we will publish shortly. And uh, I look forward to see you uh, for more adventures in Wyoming uh, soon. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Enjoy your afternoon.